export incentives and benefits. To encourage growth of exports, governments can step in and provide business communities with needed support in various ways. Government of India has many different policies, programs and activities to help develop competitive products and increase export sales. Government of India, like almost all other governments, has been endeavouring to develop exports. Export development is important to the firm and to the economy as a whole government measures aim normally at the general improvement of the export performance of the nation for the general benefit of the economy. Such measures help exporting firms in several ways. India is turning out to be a major player in world trade. The government of India has set up plans to double the economic growth by 2020. For this to happen, it has initiated steps for the overall development of the country's foreign trade. While increase in export is of vital importance, efforts are also made to facilitate those imports which are required to stimulate Indian economy. The capability of Indian MSME products to compete in international markets is reflected in its share of about 34% in national exports. In case of items like ready-made garments, leather goods, processed foods, engineering items, the performance has been commendable both in terms of value and their share within the MSME sector, while in some cases like sports goods, they account for 100% share to the total exports of the sector. In this lesson, we will discuss various incentives and benefits given to organizations indulged in export of goods or services. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to describe export incentives for exporters, explain the provisions of EPZs, EOUs, SENs, etc. The Government of India has framed several schemes to promote exports and to obtain foreign exchange. These schemes grant incentives and other benefits. Export incentives play an important role in international trade. As these incentives impart cost competitiveness to exports, thereby facilitating greater market penetration. In order to promote exports and to obtain foreign exchange, the Government of India has framed several schemes. These schemes grant incentive and other benefits. Under schemes, raw material and other components can be imported without payment of customs duty for use in goods to be exported. Export credits export incentives take the form of cash assistance or cash compensatory support on exports of certain items due to drawback, that is, a refund of central excise and custom duties levied on raw materials and components used in the manufacture of exports, import replenishment to replace imported raw materials and components used in the manufacture of exports, air freight subsidy on the export of certain products, special treatment for export-oriented units for import of raw materials, and credit facilities from approved financial institution at pre-shipment and post-shipment stages. DEPB refers to the duty entitlement passport to neutralize the incidence of basic customs duty on the import content of export product. Introduced in 1997, the DEPB scheme has been popular among exporters. Flexibility and ease of operation giving the option to the exporters to use the credit for either payment of customs duty on its own imports or sell the credit to any other importer has resulted in many exporters opting for this scheme. The scheme is easy to administer and more transparent. The scheme is similar to SENVAT credit scheme. The exporter gets credit when he exports the goods. The credit is on basis of rates prescribed. This credit can be utilized for payment of customs duty on imported goods. The objective of the scheme is to neutralize incidence of customs duty on the import content of export product. The neutralization shall be provided by way of grant of duty credit against the export product. Exports under DEPB scheme are allowed 
only when DEPB rate for the concerned export product is finalized. Under this scheme, exporters will be granted duty credit on the basis of notified entitlement rates. The entitlement rates will be notified by DGFT. The entitlement rates will be a percentage of FOB. The entitlement rate will be fixed on basis of standard input-output norms and deemed import content. Value addition achieved in export product will also be taken into account. The standard definition applied by international organizations states that an export processing zone EPZ is an industrial area that constitutes an enclave with regard to customs tariffs and the commercial code in force in the host country. Traditionally, therefore, the concept of EPZs evolved to compensate for anti-export bias created by the Import Substitution Industrial ISI policy regime. An ISI strategy creates an incentive structure which tends to be biased against the export sector. The overvalued exchange rate coupled with high tariffs and quantitative restrictions QRs makes production for import substitution significantly profitable relative to production for exports. The major incentives and facilities available to SEZ developers include exemption from customs or excise duties for development of SEZs for authorized operations approved by the BOA, income tax exemption on income derived from the business of development of the SEZ in a block of 10 years in 15 years under Section 80 IAB of the Income Tax Act. Exemption from minimum alternate tax under Section 115 JB of the Income Tax Act. Exemption from dividend distribution tax under Section 115 O of the Income Tax Act. Exemption from central sales tax, CST. Exemption from service tax, Sections 7.26 and 2nd Schedule of the SEZ Act. The Export-Oriented Unit EOU scheme, which had been introduced in the early 1980s, remains in the forefront of countries' export production schemes. The scheme has witnessed many changes over the last 24 years in the context of ever-changing economic realities. However, the basic premise remains the same. This premise is that the exporters are treated as a special class and given the required tariff, non-tariff, and policy support to facilitate their export efforts. Thus, today the EOU scheme has emerged as a dynamic policy initiative facilitating the exporting community in the task of increased exports. The EXIM policy 2002-07 reinforces the importance of scheme in Chapter 6 of the policy. 100% EOUs fall into three categories. 1. EOUs established anywhere in India and exporting 100% products except certain fixed percentage of sales in the domestic tariff area, DTA, as may be permissible under the policy. 2. Units in free trade zones in special economic zones, SEZs, and exporting 100% of their products. 3. EOUs set up in software technology parks, STPs, and electronic hardware te technology parks, EHTPs, of India for development of software and electronic hardware. A free trade zone, FTZ, is one or more special areas of a country where some normal trade barriers, such as tariffs and quotas, are eliminated and bureaucratic requirements are lowered in hopes of attracting new business and foreign investments. Free trade zones can be defined as labor-intensive manufacturing centers that involve the import of raw materials or components and the export of factory products. Several FTZs have been established at various places in India like Khanla, Noida, Cochin, etc. 
No excise duties are payable on goods manufactured in these zones provided they are made for export purpose. Goods being brought in these zones from different parts of the country are brought without the payment of any excise duty. Moreover, no custom duties are payable on imported raw material and components used in the manufacture of such goods being exported. If entire production is not sold outside the country, the unit has the provision of selling 25% of the production in India. On such sale, the excise duty is payable at 50% of the basic plus additional customs or normal excise duty payable if the goods were produced elsewhere in India, whichever is higher. The special economic zones in India closely follow the PRC model. India passed Special Economic Zone Act in 2005. As of 2007, more than 500 SEZs have been proposed, 220 of which have been created. This has raised the concern of the World Bank which questions the sustainability of such a large number of SEZs. The main objective of the SEZ Act are generation of additional economic activity, promotion of exports of goods and services, promotion of investment from domestic and foreign sources, creation of employment opportunities, and development of infrastructure facilities. It is expected that this will trigger a large flow of foreign and domestic investment in SEZs, infrastructure and productive capacity, leading to generation of additional economic activity and creation of employment opportunities. Other schemes for export promotion include Electronic Hardware Technology Park or Software Technology Parks, which is just like FTZ scheme, but it is restricted to units in the electronics and computer hardware and software sector. Advanced license or duty exemption entitlement scheme under which either quantity based or value based is given to an exporter against which the raw materials and other components may be imported without payment of customs duty provided the manufactured goods are exported. Export Promotion Capital Goods Scheme, which allows exporters to import machinery both new and second-hand, duty-free or at concessional duty. Deemed exports, which includes those transactions in which goods supplied do not leave country and payment for such supplies is received either in Indian rupees or in foreign exchange. Duty drawback means the rebate of duty chargeable on import material or excisable material used in the manufacturing of goods in and is exported. Served from India scheme gives a value of 10% of the FE earned from export of services in the previous year in the form of duty credit script. Market access initiative scheme is intended to provide financial assistance for medium-term export promotion efforts with a sharp focus on a country and product. Marketing development assistance is intended to provide financial assistance for a range of export promotion activities implemented by export promotion councils, industry and trade associations on a regular basis every year. The objective of the STAR Export House Scheme is to accelerate growth in exports by rewarding star export houses who have achieved a quantum growth in exports. High-performing star export houses shall be entitled for a duty credit based on incremental exports substantially higher than the general annual export target fixed. To promote export of fruits, vegetables, flowers, minor forest produce and their value-added products, a new scheme namely Vishesh Krishi Upaj Yojana has been announced in the Foreign Trade Policy of 2004-09. The objective of Vishesh Krishi and Gram Udyog Yojana is to promote export of fruits, vegetables, flowers, minor forest produce, dairy, poultry and their value-added products and Gram Udyog products by providing incentives to exporters of such products. Focus Market Scheme is to enhance export competitiveness by offsetting the high freight cost 
and other disabilities to select international markets. Focus Product Scheme provides incentives to exports of products which have high employment intensity in rural and semi-urban areas so as to offset the inherent infrastructure inefficiencies and other associated costs involved in marketing of these products. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Export Processing Zone EPZ is an industrial area that constitutes an enclave with regard to custom tariffs and the commercial code in force in the host country. Right or wrong? Right. EOU stands for Export Oriented Units. Right or wrong? Right. FTZ stands for Foreign Trade Zone. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. The Government of India has framed several schemes to promote exports and to obtain foreign exchange. These schemes grant incentives and other benefits. Export incentives play an important role in international trade. These schemes grant incentive and other benefits. Under schemes, raw material and other components can be imported without payment of customs duty for use in goods to be exported. Export credits, export incentives take the form of cash assistance or cash compensatory support on exports of certain items, duty drawback that is, a refund of central excise and customs duties levied on raw materials and components used in the manufacture of exports, import replenishment to replace imported raw materials and components used in the manufacture of exports, air freight subsidy on the export of certain products, special treatment for export oriented units for import of raw material and credit facilities from approved financial institutions pre-shipment and post-shipment stages. Attempts to promote the EPZ as an export platform on the basis of economic incentives such as the provision of better infrastructure and tax holidays became a feature of Indian development. The first zone was set up in 1965. Exim policy 1997 to 2002 has introduced a new scheme from April 1, 2000 for establishment of the Special Economic Zones SEZs in different parts of the country. SEZ is an almost self-contained area with high class infrastructure for commercial as well as residential inhabitation. In 1980, the government introduced the Export Oriented Unit Scheme, EOUs. This scheme facilitates the setting up of EOUs beyond the boundaries of EPZs. A 100% Export Oriented Unit is an industrial unit offering for export its entire production, excluding the permitted levels of domestic tariff area sales. EOUs may be set up with a foreign equity participation of up to 100%. A 100% export oriented unit is an industrial unit offering for export its entire production, excluding the permitted levels of domestic tariff area sales. EOUs may be set up with foreign equity participation of up to 100%.